So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat while I tell you about Isle of Sky from Chieftain to King by Mayfair Games. A game about trying to have the best territory you can using tile placement and also trading. The way the game works is first everyone will draw three tiles from this lovely cloth bag here. They'll then put these tiles in front of their screen so that everyone can see them. However, behind their screen, they have an axe and also money. What they're going to do is they're going to pick one of these tiles by pointing the axe at it to get axe to be removed and placed back into the bag. The others, they have to set a price on using their own money. But you do have to put at least one coin against each one not being axed. So you'll do this in secret once everyone's done this. You then reveal and get rid of your axed ones and then starting with the first player in the round which will be changing each round you will decide whether you want to buy someone else's tile. So the thing is if you've put all your money setting the price you then have no money left to buy. This is really nice because it means you've got to balance your wishes to buy but also setting high prices because when someone buys your tile you get your money back, plus they have to match the amount of money you put there, so you double your money in effect when you put the money on that tile. If no one buys it, you get the tile. So there's an element of setting the prices high in order to get the tile, but also setting the prices reasonably high if you're not so worried about getting the tile, but you want to get a lot of money so that you then have more buying power in future rounds. This creates a really interesting dynamic around the table, that actually works no matter how many players you've got. Even in a two player game where you've only got the two people that you're kind of going, well, how much money are they gonna hold back? How, how much can I afford to set this at? Can I outprice this so I get to keep it? Oh, but then I've not got much to buy with. That works fantastically well. It does work better with more people, this trading mechanic. And so, yeah, I would say that's the key thing about this game with regards to scalability that is going to drive it to be better with more players. I would say this is at its best with the maximum player count. And there's probably few games I would say that about. Five players with this just works fantastically because the big, biggest decision making point is right then when you're setting those prices and everyone's doing it simultaneously. And so yeah, two can play this game, but best with five. I will happily, however, play this with any number of people. You know, I just want to make that clear. Best, but it's by a small margin. So, that is then that round. You've gone round, everyone's either bought or sold. You then have the tiles that were left in front of you you get to keep, and any you've bought, you get to keep. So you're probably going to have between one and three. Because if you couldn't afford someone else's, and someone bought one of yours, you might be left with just one tile. If no one bought any of yours, but you bought one of someone else's, you could have three tiles. You then add those tiles to your kingdom. And this is going to work because you start with your castle here by matching terrain types, as most tile placements are. Mountains to mountains, meadows to meadows, water to water. These tiles have a lot of different features on them. These different features will kind of come into effect for different things. And that's where these scoring tokens here come into account. Because at the end of each round, once we've built up our kingdoms with our tiles, we then score. What we're going to score is not only going to vary each round, but vary each game. Because each game, you're going to use four of these tokens from the stack of tokens. So this gives a fantastic amount of replay value to this game. This is an incredibly replayable game. I have yet to see the same combination of tiles. I might see one or two come out, but never the same combination, never in the same positions, which does make a difference. Because each of these tiles will score three times in the game at the end of three different rounds. But the combination of which rounds they're going to score, and as you go later rounds in the game, 
more of them are going to score. It creates a really interesting building up dynamic of you kind of got to go for what will score this round, but keeping in mind you're going to keep the stuff there and it will score for future rounds as well. So it's very much kind of working out what's the best way to go with this. And then coins are going to be worth points as well at the end of the game. So you kind of got to value how much it's worth buying things. There's another interesting thing about this. At the start of each round, you do an income phase. And in that income phase, you get the amount of money shown on your city, on your territory. And you can get more income by taking specific tiles that will increase your income. But you can also get extra income by being behind. It has a lovely catch-up mechanic. One of the things I love about this game is that anyone can play it and that catch-up mechanic really helps people feel like they're still in the game still in with a chance because oh no I'm not doing so well I'm doing worse than this many players I get this much extra money each round the the later the game goes the further behind you are the more money you're gonna get so this means that it kind of means it doesn't mean that you're gonna shoot ahead or just because you're behind you then gonna leap back into the front but it means you have a better fighting chance. It means that if you're not as used to the game, not as experienced with the game, you can still sit and play this with an experienced gamer. The luck of the draw on the tiles means that there is quite a lot of luck in this. But just because you've drawn those tiles does not mean you're going to get them. You've got to be sensible with how you're doing the trading, how you're setting your pricing. And if you're out in the front, the person in the far back is getting loads of money compared to you. That can make it very difficult for you to, as the person in the front, to keep hold of the things you really want to keep. And you, yeah, it just means that the game has this lovely dynamic to it for all the different number of players. And so, yeah, once you've scored a round, you just do the next round, do the next round, do the next round until you reach the end of the game. And then you score again. And there are some on some of these tiles, there are end game scoring as well as having the end of round scoring things. You have end game scoring things. So, yeah, it's just the different kind of things you've got to focus on in the different games creates a really interesting dynamic to the games being different. It's just so replayable, so easy to teach and play. The simplicity of the game, the sim you know, the fact that you're simultaneously doing that setting the price and that that is so simple. And then it's build your city and you can quite easily just quickly, right, you're a new player. Let me just glance, check. Yep, you've done a legal placement. Don't worry, you're fine. Means that it's easy for anyone to play this. You can pick it up. You can teach it easily. It's a very accessible game and it's great fun. I absolutely love Isle of Sky from Chieftain to King. I, I really do. The component quality, the artwork, everything. You know, you've got this thick cloth bag, which is huge, but that means you can actually shape the tiles up in it. If it was just big enough for the tiles, it would be really frustrating. And it's not. The tiles are being sh shaken around in this bag, they're banged together, knocked together. But these are good, hard wearing tiles, and they are not showing any sign of damage from it yet at all and i've been playing this quite a lot so yeah i'm really pleased the wooden components are good quality everything about this is great the artwork is nice and clear on what the different terrain types are and the different roads it's just got a lovely feel to this game in every way shape and form great accessibility great replay value and a lovely level of complexity with regards to the interactions between the characters. It's, it's not a huge thinky game, but it's thinky in trying to get in a social way almost of trying to think how to outbid, how to maximize your points, deciding what tiles are the ones to go for, which of the scoring conditions you need to go for, when to go for which, and yeah, just so much going for this game. Okay, that's probably enough, enough gushing on this subject. As you can tell, I do very much like it. So, I do hope you've enjoyed this video and I do hope that you found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing and sharing. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.